Well, viewers, the league could be decided in this episode coming up right here. Let's just hope that our wood is bigger than theirs. Hey yeah, everybody, welcome back to episode 22 of Pennies to Pounds. My name is Waylands, but most people call me Wally. Today we're going to bring you two matches. The first one is going to be against Sam Hardy's Shortwood at home, and then we're going to skip a match, and then we're going to bring you the away tie against Reading City. Shortwood lie fourth in the league at the moment. Reading City are first. But, well, we would have done ourselves a few more favours, let's say, if we hadn't have been sitting there fiddling with ourselves rather than winning football games. When did we last play? So we last came to you right up here against Fairfoot, I think, where Parker Pugh went on his hot streak of form. He's gone a bit quiet since then. But more worryingly, Dave Wood went quiet and Ryan Harmon was out for the last game. Gethin Harden did spread up, step up and score, though. But, but Dave Wood really has um, he, he's dropped the ball, ball. He hasn't scored in his last five games now. So we'll probably sit this one out against Shortwood. We'll go to the league and you can see the damage there. As you see, Reading City are on top there. They're six points clear, but we do have a game in hand on them. Like I always say, I'd rather have the game played and be caught up than be the game behind. They're in the box seat here. We play them away, and we play Shortwood next, as I said. But if we beat Shortwood and we beat Reading, I still think we're looking good for the league. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. So selection-wise, we are going to make a few changes here. I've brought Sean Ball in as an inverted wing-back on the right. Um, Sam Scrivens is done, as far as I'm concerned, averaging 6.3 in his last five games and just completely gone off the boil, giving the ball away needlessly. Um, I think he even gave away a penalty in a previous match. Diamond Bishop is starting to be exposed at the back here for pace, and it is a worry. Apparently, they're one of the fastest teams in the league, Shortwood. So we go in with still a reasonably familiar lineup, though. Uh, Gratorix and goal, Johnson, Bishop, Diamond, and Ball as the back four. Horn and Twig and Berries continue to play in the midfield, although they're both holding onto that spot tenuously and more for consistency than anything else. Parker Pugh and Rigby also on notice we've had a shocking run of form uh Gethin Harden steps into the pressing forward role for Dave Wood and Ryan Harnwell leads the line coming back from a mild injury that we had to sit him out for for one game uh Sean Ball's probably not going to make it through the whole game but we'll do our best to make this work I've had the heater on here it's about nine degrees outside in Adelaide at the moment I've had the heater on. I'm sweating bullets I went and had a shower and it's a little warm in here now it's going to get a little warm out there on the pitch, though. So we're going to punt the fist and tell them they're underdogs. And let's go out there and show Sam Hardy that he was wrong to leave us in the first place. And that, like I said in the intro, that our wood is better than their short wood. Not that wood's even playing. So I was really disappointed with our run of games. The guys have not played the best. And those sort of goals that we were threatening for... Uh, we've just not been good at it. and Harden, though, is through early. And that is a great start to the match for Peniston Church. Peniston Harden up there. And we go 1-0 in front against Shortwood. This is a speculative ball from Sean Ball. And Harden's firm enough there with the finish to put it past the keeper. It is 1-0 for Peniston. So hopefully beating... Um, the, these two top of the league sides is enough to snap these boys in the form. I've been quite harsh with a few of the team talks lately and I've just really pulled the boys together and told them to stop fiddling with themselves and actually get out there and play some bloody football. Horridge, what a great name. Horridge with the ball here for Shortwood. Plays it long. Dickie Diamond nods it down to Horn. Horn to Harden. Harnwell now. He's got Parker Pugh there. Harker Parker Pugh plays a beautiful ball to Gethin Harden. And all of a sudden, I don't think we need Wood. Gethin Harden has scored two in his last game for us. Hence, he's got the start against for, uh, in front against. He's got the start in front of Wood here. Look at that. Beautiful three ball for Harden there. And, well, I would have gone the other side of the keeper, but he went the hard way. But he is Harden. Perhaps he's even a harder man than Sam Hardy was. Let's hope so. What a great start, viewers. This is fantastic. Parker Pugh's form had dropped off as well, so it's good to see him involved early. Now, here comes a riggedy, riggedy Rigby down the flank. We haven't seen a lot of this lately. He's, his form's taken a dive as well after being our probably most consistent player. Oh, Harnwell 
would normally finish that, but he's had a match out with injury and he's probably not 100% sharp. But it's good to see Rigby back to his riggedy, riggedy, Rigby ways down the ring there. Sung has the ball now. The poor Starkey. Is that Richard Starkey? I love Richard Starkey. I'd love to have a Ringo Starr in my team. That would be great. Sung now. Sung looking for a ball. Horn challenges him. And that's why I've brought Horn in. And um, that's dealt with tightly by our defense there, actually. That's a lot more composed than I'm used to. Johnson. Johnson puts it up to Harnwell. Harnwell flicks it into the path of Harden, but... And I hadn't thought of that. There's, there's Harden and Harnwell. We've got Ha Ha Twins up front again. Um, oh, God, I can't believe I said that again. Gethin Harden goes around. Goes for his hat trick. Why have I not been playing the boy? Why have I not been playing the boy? He's... It's half... Not even half time yet. And he's got three on the board. This is a great finish. Look at this. The keeper, well, to be fair, the keeper will be pretty unhappy with himself that he didn't do a better job there. But we've hardened up here against Shortwood. And obviously, um, they're a bit flaccid. But um, considering how we've been playing, I'm really, really happy with us here. Let's get out there, boys. How's Sean Ball playing? A 6.8. So that, that's good. This is looking like I've made some good changes here. However, they have a free kick now. We do have some insurance. But you know us, boys. We've bottled games from better positions than this in the past. Right now, we're going to make some subs here. Who are we going to sub off? Joe, you know what? We might be... Rig did I? I don't think I changed the bench properly. I did want to bring on Hancock to replace Rigby but I don't have him what am I going to do here I could put um, Parker Pugh out there but he's playing well on his flank there so I'm probably not going to who can I put out there um, I could probably play Dave Wood out there um, does Ed Jobs play out there no Ed Jobs doesn't play out there is it Steele that plays out there yeah Steele plays out there we're going to bring on Scott Steele and he can firm us up a bit more there. Bring some bring some metal to the team. We're going to say the pressure's off, go out, play his natural game. Doesn't calm him down at all. I reckon the only substitute tool that works is to tell them that you have faith in them, get out there and make a difference. Everything else, they stand there like I'm talking to a bunch of keys. Reading City are tuned up against Burnham. So Burnham aren't doing us a favour over there. So we have to do this off our own bat here. But this is a fantastic start to the episode. Morris hooks it in, and Bishop rises up high above and nods the ball away. And Horn now in a bit of space. He's got support. Harnwell runs onto it. Harnwell is hardened in the middle. He goes for steel instead, and that's a, that's a bullet-like clearance uh, by the Shortwood defender. Smith now running at... Now, this is Sean Ball's problem, his lack of pace. But at... Ends up going out for a goal kick anyway. Smith now on the ball. Oh, Twig and Berry's getting involved here. Everyone's got involved. Um, except Bishop and Ball, perhaps. I mean, it's not Sean Ball's natural position, so I will let him off there. Um, but he does have 10 for tackling and good defensive mentals. Well, that was lucky. Is Sam Hardy even playing against us here? Yeah, he is. He's had, he's had a shocker. He's trying to do his old club a favour here, and we haven't seen him in a single highlight. Gethin Harden puts in the long... Oh, that's a great punch by um, Horridge there. And now Smith is being chased down by the aforementioned Twig and Berry. Twig and Berry slides in but muffs it. And, well, I spoke too soon. There's Sam Hardy, and he's scoring a goal against us again. So he's doing exactly what Nick Guest did in the previous episode and scored against his old club. Uh, really, we should have done better there. We gave him two bites of the cherry, and he's taken it, unsurprisingly. Anyway, we ran out here 3-1 winners at the end of the game. And that's really, really pleasing performance. We're going to outstretch the arms. Why is Sean Ball complacent for? Not having that. Not having that at all. Anyway, we'll see you just before the Reading City game. All right, something told me I should have televised the game in between 
the last game and the one upcoming against Reading City, we won nine one against poor Abingdon United. Ryan Harnwell scored three. Gethin Harden scored one. Rigby got us off the mark in the side the first 10 minutes. Uh, Twig and Berry's got a couple of assists. Look at that. Absolute monster performance by the back four. Dalton comes on and gets a seven. Frank Sandbeans comes on for a, for a, a rare appearance and gets two assists. And Dave Wood, Dave Wood scores four goals in one game. My God. It's given me uh, uh, something to think about selection. We're, we're going to watch the goals. Why not? Just look at how our boys put these poor souls to the sword. Like Twig and Barry sets up riggedy, riggedy Rigby here, and he puts it in. This time, Rigby turns creator and puts it through for Harden, who scores on the angle. Absolutely great stuff. Bad clearance by Burley here. Twig and Berries puts Harnwell through for his first of the match. Bishop here hits the typical Peniston hoofball. And Harnwell again beats the keeper. Bear in mind, it's 32 minutes here. It's not even half time yet. This is 33 minutes. Coin now. And um, that was a bit of a mistake by um, Bishop there. Didn't quite get up enough to nod the ball away. But that was it. That was the only sniff these poor souls got. Dickie Diamond with the assist there. Puts Harmwell through for his hat trick. So I thought, I'm going to bring Harmwell off at half time. I'll give him a rest and play some of the other boys. So I did. So Franks and Beans here sets up Wood for the first of his four. This, this was just amazing stuff, folks. Uh, Johnson puts it to Bishop. And I thought Wood was offside here. But no, he wasn't. In it goes. Franks and Beans involved again here. With a beautiful ball over the top for Wood. Looks, that looks to be the deal, Sandbeans. Um, might find himself getting a bit more game time. Sean Ball this time gets it on the act and puts Wood through for the last of his goals. And that is how you demolish a team and go into play the top of the table team with a bit of confidence. We're not going to go very defensive. We're going to stay positive. Um, I don't think we're going to make any changes to the team. I think Horn's still suspended. Yeah, he is. Uh, Priest was probably the only disappointment there, but he is club captain, so I'm going to give him the start here. So we're going unchanged from last match, guys. We're not going to we're not going to mess with it. We're going to leave Harden there as much as Wood scored four. He scored the four as the poacher. So I'm going to leave Gethin Harden there. He has been playing well, and I'm not going to pull a guy out on the 7.8 form. When we're going up against the top of the table, Reading City, this is a huge game, viewers. This is a massive game. This this could well decide the league. Well, not decide the league. This will allow us to have the league in our own hands. If we if we win this and we keep winning, it's us. So let's definitely carry straight on from where you finished off last match, gentlemen. Uh, let's and let, let's get into this the, this tie here. I don't quite start. Let, let let's throw out some encouragement for the boys here. Not that they need it after the last match. I was I was so I, I could not believe it. I think that's the best win I've had on Football Manager twenty one so far. I mean, I've had some big wins in friendlies, and I've had some big wins in previous iterations of Football Manager, but nothing like that in a league game so far. That was just a brutal demolition. Parker Pugh gives the ball straight away here. But Gratorex is awake to the cross there from the Reading City player. And he puts it long, looking for Harden. Harden can't get there. Hargraves does, though. And this looks dangerous. Walker is in here. Will he score? No, Gratorex. The absolute boss that he is. The Media 11 Dream Team keeper lives up to it. And Rigby does well. It's good to see Rigby come back into form. He's like... He's one of... Two remaining players now that are originals that get a regular start now that um, Scrivens has dropped down the order. It's just him and Gratorex left. And as I say, praise Gratorex, that happens. Bugger me. What we can't do is lose this game. That 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 would be bad. Right, we're going to have to go a bit more attacking here, I think. Uh, Walker on the ball now. And Dicky Diamond heads it away. Are we going to beat it there? No. Harnwell is beaten to the ball by Furlong. Furlong, no, Harnwell now. Harnwell shows his pace. What the hell was that, Harnwell? What? I don't know what I just saw there, viewers. That's just ridiculous. Chapman throws the ball down in front of him. 
Good kick to Bishop. Bishop looks for Harmwell. Can't quite get the header up there. Harmwell this time. No, no. Sean Ball cleans it up and he puts it over the top. No, <laughs> again. Rightio. We're determined to score here, chat. We're going to do it now. Oh, he's crazy outside of the post. And it's 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 not gone well there for us. We're going we're gonna to throw out some... Actually, we're going to demand a bit more here because we were better than this in the last game, guys. We were much better than this. Come on. We, we, we need a score here. And Joe, you know I was thinking we we're demolishing that other team nine one. I thought, yep, yeah, here we go. I can smell uh, absolute FMing coming in here. I'm gonna point the finger and look. The, you're all playing terribly, boys. It's only one nil though. It's well within. I uh, mean, we just scored nine goals in a game. Where it's well within our capabilities to pull this one back. I was gonna say pull this one off, but. That would be going a bit far. Right. We get in the way there, but we can't get the ball. This th th this is a pretty good side, this Reading City side, to be fair. Ejah for Walker. Hendry. Milardo. Oh, that's unfortunate. Milardo has beat um, Gratorix on his nearby. I said good things about Gratorix. I should know that. I, I shit-talked um, Rigby and he played well. And I said nice things about Gratorix. And that happens. And Rigby's having a terrible game as well, right? We're making some substitutions now. We really need to shake things up here and get things happening. Harnell's having a shocker, so he comes straight off for Dave Wood. I, I, I am pulling off a 30-odd goal striker, boys and girls. You, you, just, you saw that right. Uh, Franks and Beans can come on for... Um, twig and berries beans and berries much of a muchness really in the middle of the park there but um, Sam Beans was informed from the last game um, and what else do I do here Parker Pugh's not playing well do I bring in Fraser Vickers over there pretty sure Fraser Vickers is a left winger yeah he is that's a big call though that is a big call. But I think that's what I'm left with. Um, in other news, Craig Laycock left the club um, in between episodes. So there is my left winger option gone. And um, Billy Law is still not 100% fit after coming back from injury. So Fraser Vickers, um, the ex grade out boy, gets a call up here. And... Um, I don't think he'll ever play a bigger game for Penistone Church in his life. Uh, we're going to pump the fist, get out there and make a difference, boys. Franks and Beans is inspired and motivated. We're going to demand more from the entire side here. We're going to berate them in a minute because this is just terrible stuff. Ball's having a shocker back there. Right, yeah, we have a throw in. Ball finds Harden. Harden through to Rigby and, oh, like I said, Cameron Rigby, I mean, I know he scored in the last two games, but he had has been off the boil and um, this is not looking good. We, we are looking at being the bridesmaids here again. We're going to berate the team for the last few minutes here and we're going to go um, full penis to the stone, if you will. Balls to the wall, foot to the floor. And it's not going to be enough, is it? No, it's not. Well, that is disappointing. We played such a good game last game, and then that that just stinks of complacency, that does. It absolutely stinks of complacency. We're up there on XG. We just haven't converted. And it says a lot us about us being a poor defensive side. And when we don't attack well, well, shit like this happens. Uh, I'm going to point the finger. And tell them I'm, how disappointed I am. You should be motivated now, boys. Well, that leaves us in a bit of a conundrum. We are relying on those guys to lose two games now. And we just need to keep winning. Uh, that 9-1 win does give me encouragement that we are much better than the mid-table sides. But, wow. So we are six points behind now without the game in hand. It's not looking good. 
Well, if you enjoyed that, guys, leave a big thumbs up on there for me. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. We'll be back with you in a few days, probably for end of season shenanigans, and we'll see how we go. My name's Waylands. Most people call me Wally, and I'll see you next time.